Good morning and welcome to Holy Trinity. I'm Pastor Tim and on behalf of Pastor Katie and myself, we are both really glad to see you among us this morning in our online worshiping community. Again, as we offer up our gifts today of a prayer and a praise to God, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, and to again receive God's Word today as God's gift to us. We again remind you that in addition to doing things like this online in this form of worship, we're also gathering outdoors uh, live while we can on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. each week, and we're doing so with Holy Communion included. So bring your canopy, bring your lawn chairs if you if you desire, and join us uh, masked and distance on the lawn, or you can just park within sight of uh, of the of the service and and listen in on your FM radio, or or just roll down your windows and and hear via the PA system as well. Either way. We'd love to have you have you there. If you're again still among the high risk category, we still encourage you to worship either online or again in your vehicle for the time being. Remind you too that whether it's live or whether it's recorded, it's all a gift to God. It's all a blessed reminder again of, of the community that we are blessed to share in Christ Jesus. So that's why how it is that we're sent then also as God's people to be a beacon of hope to a very challenging world and a very challenging time for that matter. And just a reminder that after worship this Sunday, we're also going to be meeting together with parents of children, uh, grades uh, preschool through fourth grade, and discussing Sunday school in the shape of children's ministry in this coming year. So join us in person if you can, or over Zoom either way from 10 o'clock in the morning, and we'll, we'll see if we can figure out together uh, what we're open to, what the challenges are, what the best shape of those ministries might be, given what we know. So let's now center ourselves, shall we? With a moment of quiet, the deep breath, ready ourselves to again offer up the gifts of our hearts, our minds, our souls to God in worship together today. As we do, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let's begin then, shall we, with our opening song. Let us pray. 
God of mercy, we know that you have promised to be with us, to be our help in times of trouble. Yet still things happen far outside of our control and often in ways where it's hard to know where to find you or look for signs of your presence or your purpose. May we reawaken our imaginations, Lord, that your word might speak to us afresh today. And again, that our hearts and our ears and our eyes might show us again how close you long to be and just how wide God's amazing love is. In Jesus' name, amen. I am Pastor Katie, and this is Gus. Each week we've been sharing a message with you. And you can tell we're in the same spot we usually are, but maybe for those of you who have watched more than once, it looks a little different. Why does it look a little different? Well, let's think about this. I spy with my little eye. Well, there's no flowers. Usually Pastor Katie has all of her flowers up here, but they're gone. I spy with my little eye. Well, the back of my deck. It too is gone. I spy with my little eye, Gus. Gus even looks different. He got a haircut. Why did Gus get a haircut? Gus got a haircut because last week after the storms came through my our area here, and you may have heard them, the big winds that came and, and came to everyone's homes. Well, Gus got so confused. He didn't know how to protect us, to keep us safe. And he ran away. And when he ran away, he got stuck in some thorns and his fur was covered. And the only way that we could show him love and show him that we cared about him was to bring him home and cut all the burrs off and cut his fur off. I wanna share this Psalm with you. It comes from the Psalm 138. Thank you, everything in me says thank you. Angels listen as I sing my thanks. I thank you for your love and I thankful, thankful, thank you for your faithfulness in me. You know, I, I didn't necessarily feel thankful for the storm, but when Gus ran away because he was confused, I was overwhelmed with thankfulness that someone found him and was able to bring him home. I'm grateful that Gus is with us now because Gus is keeping us laughing. Gus is keeping us knowing that we are still a family and he might have less fur, and Pastor Katie might need to get a new deck, but God is faithful and God loves us now and always. I want you to hear how the Psalm finishes. I want you to hear this. When I walk in the thick of trouble, keep me alive in the angry turmoil, which means in the things that happen around me. Finish, oh God, what you've started in me. Your love is eternal. Don't quit on me now. Gus is reminding us to be faithful because he's faithful to us and God is faithful to us. God loves us and is with us. So you may have had a storm at your house. I want you to talk to moms and dads about how that felt. We had a storm here and we're okay. Gus is okay. And as we continue to recover and I just ask that you think of your neighbors, ask them, how can I help you? How can I care for you? How can I show you love? Let's pray. When I pray, I like to fold my hands. I like to bow my head because we're talking to God. And then I like to close my eyes so that we're not looking around. Will you pray with me, please? Oh, God of all creation, we give you thanks for loving us, for giving us forever. We pray this in all things. We pray this in Jesus' name and all people say, Amen. This is from Psalm 138. Thank you. Everything in me says thank you. Angels, listen as I sing my thanks. Hey. I, I kneel in worship facing your holy temple and say it again. Thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your faithfulness. Most holy is your name. Most holy is your word. The moment I called out, you stepped in. You made my life large with strength. When they hear what you have to say, God, all earth's kings will say thank you. And here's why God high above sees far below. No matter the distance, he knows everything about us. When I walk into th the thick of trouble, keep me alive in the angry turmoil. Finish what you have started in me, God. Your love is eternal. Don't quit on me now. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. It comes from the prophet Isaiah in the 51st chapter. 
where he writes, Listen to me, all you who are serious about right living and committed to seeking God. Ponder the rock from which you were cut, the quarry from which you were dug. Yes, ponder Abraham, in fact, your father and Sarah who bore you. Think of it, one solitary man when I called him, but once I blessed him, he multiplied. Likewise, I, God, will comfort Zion, or Iowa. Comfort all her mounds of ruins. I'll transform her dead ground to Eden, her moonscape into the garden of God, a place filled with exuberance and laughter, thankful voices and melodic songs. Pay attention, my people. My decisions light up the world. My deliverance arrives on the run. My salvation right on time. I'll bring justice to the peoples. The skies will fade out like smoke. The earth will wear out like work pants. (laughs) And the people will die off like flies. But my salvation will last forever. My setting things right will never be obsolete. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Hi, I'm Pastor Katie. And before we share our time of um, conversation and message and listening to the scriptures and talking about the scriptures, let's start off with a prayer. Would you pray with me, please? Oh, God of all creation, we ask in this here and now that you just dwell with us as you have promised to do. Whatever's on our mind, wherever we are right now, Lord, will you bring your peace, bring your comfort, And may the words that are spoken this morning be the words you intend your listeners to hear. And in hearing together, we share. We pray this in all things in your name, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Our sermon this week has some really amazing opportunities to talk about multiple uh, different scripture readings. So I just want to put a couple of thoughts out there and have you, if you were or you could, to later go to your Bibles and look at these scriptures and see what you thought, what you hear, and what you're experiencing. These are my thoughts that we're gonna share together. First of all, Psalm 138, it's on Thanksgiving. And then Isaiah 51, it talks about looking back so we can look forward. It is about where your rock, who is your rock, and how are you formed? And then Matthew 16 asks the question, who do you say I am? These are amazing passages, and I just want to spend a little time with them. Now, Psalm 135, 138, uh, admittedly, is my favorite. It is entitled the Psalm of Thanksgiving. It has been an encouragement as well as a challenge for me, and I've carried it with me all the last few days, the last 10 days. See, in the midst of a global um, pandemic, national protests, political conventions, recent Senate happenings, youth gatherings, and so on. Along came a storm that no one had expected. Our family has lived through hurricanes from the Gulf. We have lived in earthquakes in Japan. We have been in areas where shooting and violence has been the number um, concern. We have been with bomb threats where we would go to work only to be asked to leave. We have seen buildings with sharpshooters on them. We have survived tornadoes and so forth and so on. Maybe you have your stories too of what has been unusual. But this hurricane in Iowa, well, of all things, without the sirens, without the warnings, took us all by surprise. In fact, had it not been that I was on a Zoom meeting for our staff here at church and Laurel had mentioned that her own family in Marshalltown and her family of friends were experiencing these high winds, I wouldn't even have taken notice. When I did hear the news from Laurel, I thought I was being really clever. I took the umbrella down that sits on our back um, deck and I took it down and laid it on the ground. Only uh, minutes later, the storm hit. I got my family inside right before it hit and that umbrella that I had put on the ground was crushed along with the rest of the deck. The storm that has hit has caused us to think that we are vulnerable once again. What is on your mind today? The neighbors you have up to the north, they're overwhelmed, they're exhausted, but they are persevering. I thought really at first that, you know, this is what is going on in our world. It's too much. 
But maybe you have a it's too much story too. Where were you when the storm of 2020 hit? Where were you when the cult news of this COVID and your life would be changed forever? Where were you when that news hit? Where were you when hurt betrayal of the protests of 2020 hit? Where were you? Fill in the plate, space. The writer of this Psalm 138 invites us to name it. It says, the moment I called out, you stepped in. You made my life large with strength. When they hear what you have to say, God's all kings, earth's kings will say, thank you. And here's why. God, high above, sees far below. No matter the distance, God knows everything about us. But don't stop there. Professor Dennis uh, Tucker Jr. invites us to lean into a few original Greek words so that we can understand the fullness of this psalm from first verse four. This word, yada. I apologize if I'm saying it incorrectly, but that's how I heard it. And it means to confess or speak the truth that all systems of authority of our world one day will sing, not for the glory of the country or the ruler, but we'll sing for thanksgiving for what God has done for the most vulnerable. And that is what God has called us to do. Let me say that again. Verse four speaks the truth that all systems of authority of our world will one day sing, not for the glory of our country or a ruler, but we'll sing for thanksgiving for what God has done. Certainly I've had my own share of trauma in this past storm. But my worries don't compare to the realities of the lives of over 200 citizens in Cedar Rapids who were forced into camping tents after their apartment building was so badly damaged, it was condemned, and then they were indeed evicted for safety reasons. But here's where it hurts. Their landlord walked away and left them behind. Many do not speak English as a first language. In fact, they speak so many different languages that they're that they did not have interpreters readily available to help them get the assistance that they needed. And the assistance that they were giving was challenging. When you've lost everything, you're not ready necessarily to go away and go into a safe place that's been set aside when your belongings are in a building and you're not allowed to go back. Their children were everywhere. They had lost not only their belongings, they had lost everything that they had known to survive. Yet there they were, camped out 20 to 30 miles from this place called Holy Trinity. What did you lose? Where were you when the storm is hit? And where was God? Well, in all acts of passion, compassion, through our hands, feet, and voice to the others, those who are most vulnerable and hurting, those that need encouragement, those that just need to hear, hey, are you okay? That's when we can experience God firsthand. See, folks came to those people in the tents. They came with water, food, security, supplies. And then they cried out, we can do better. Iowans, this is not how we are known for. In the message that God is is. Um, sharing with us today. We hear that in the thick of our very own crisis, whatever our crisis is, not to be judged or given um, any sense of your crisis, bigger or mine, but what is your crisis? God is there dwelling in the midst of it. Professor Tucker continues to say, the Greek translation of this word that means um, to hurt or be in trouble that our scripture uses. The Hebrew root of this word means to a narrowness, a constriction. Here's some, understood as something that's squeezing the life out of a person. The psalmist refuses to allow such movement of seemingly constriction and sheer distress to have the last word though. I wanna go back. Are you in that place where someone used the word, are you in trouble? And you go, I'm not in trouble, but I've been using this to say to people, I'm not broken, but I'm breaking. 
I've had 10 contractors look at the house. I've had 10 contractors look at my mother's house. It is every single time. It dredges every single moment of it back again and again. But yesterday I worked on the house of someone else, uh, an older gentleman that is all alone, children who have long since left the area. He has no equipment, but we walked over and simply started carrying away debris and my heart was full. No longer self-centered on what my work has to be done, but seeing how I could add my helping hands to his work. You know, I hit a wall last week. I'm gonna be honest, fragile. And it felt like I had been so squeezed, I had been unable to breathe. And it comes in the most um, amazing moments of compassion. Members of this church brought cookies. That's all, and it meant everything. The devastation at our home it has been carried out. We are good, but the devastation at my mother's home next door, only steps away, requires professional skilled labor. All I needed to know was that we, someone asked, are you okay? But when that wall hit, all I could see was what was going on in our own lives. There was a face post um, by Andy Stanley. He is a pastor of a very large church down in, in the South. And um, Pastor Stanley writes um, this headline. He asks us, "Where? Uh, what are we talking about in our homes? What is our dinner conversation and what are we consumed with? He said, if you were to write a headline for your family right now and for your household, what would the words be? What would people see so they could see the rest of it? And he talks about how these headlines, these headlines can be what the news has decided is happening in our lives, or they could be our own. In my headline for my family, it has been, wow. See how your children rise to the occasion. My children have spent over 400 hours or more, not only uh, clearing and cutting the debris, stacking the debris, but helping to haul it away. 400 hours. They're tired and exhausted, and yet they laugh and they're funny. And I can't help but stop and watch because I'm so proud of them. I do believe that it comes from years upon years of taking them on mission trips where they were able to see beyond themselves. It was hot, it's uncomfortable, and yet they've seen that there was work to be done. But that work is to be done still does not diminish the headline that it's all about relationships. Relationships with God and one another. We haul the debris away because that's the necessary task. But how we do it and with our heart and how it is filled and that is indeed where God dwells and says, don't forget to have compassion for one another. In times of truly great hardship, this psalm writer uh, just spoke out and spoke out loudly. I'm wondering this weekend as this very psalm is read to congregations upon congregations, will it give us life? I know it's giving me life. It's giving me a sense of hope. How? Because I know that there will be moments it, that I am silent, but this psalm will be heard and shouted out loudly to others. This psalm of thanksgiving that Lord, you are with us here and now and my heart is thankful. I may not be able to always use the words, but I beg and cry out for others to speak when there are those who are hurting and cannot. Because we are indeed thankful. We are indeed thankful and it is this knowledge, this thankfulness, this collective thankfulness that God is God and we are God's people that will give me strength and give my neighbors and give you strength in the coming weeks so that even when our hearts are fragile, our energy is drained, our questions seem so huge, where are you, God? We will hear and know that the voice of many have proclaimed gratitude. It means that even in my own personal silence, my own exhaustion, my downright angst, <laughs> there will be songs of thanksgiving. And not about what God has done, but that God is with us. It's not in the, the final product. It's that God is with us in the act. 
in the act of rest restoration and healing. All of this requires living in the moment, thinking to the past, to looking to the future, a God that has been, is, and will be with us. This is our message from Isaiah. He says, hey, I want you to ponder the rock from which you were cut, the quarry for which you were dug. Think back to the days of Abraham and Sarah. So he's inviting you, think back to the family memories. As we have cut down trees, we have remembered what we did and, and the, what activities we had around those trees. The horses and the that sat under those trees and got shade. The picnics that we've had. The things that we watched just around those trees and took notice but also taking notes, we took, we took um, the trees for granted, that they'd always be there. These 150, 200 year old trees snapped. Isaiah invites you to look back so that you can look to the future. Think back and pause and now listen. I have a new favorite song, it's called The Blessing. Uh, you can look it up on YouTube. I think it was written when it was part of the Australian fires. Yeah, you remember those fires? Those two happened in 2020. How quickly we forget when our own news quickly takes center stage. But I want to invite you and I to think back and pause, but don't lose momentum. Don't look, lose momentum. The voice that we have gathered together to shout out, people are hurting. We need to take that movement forward whether it's hurting because of disease, destruction, or downright lack of dignity for one another. We cannot lose momentum. God is present with us. So pick up debris that has fallen. Go to a neighbor and ask how they're doing. Stay informed, march. Have voice for those who need to hear from us. You know this COVID thing? It's out there. I heard about it again all morning long on the radio, but it's not on my radar right now until it was, until one of my family members had to get tested because he'd been put at risk. These things are right in the here and now, but so is God. God is in our right here and now. So about COVID, would you just wear a mask and invite your neighbor to? I know I have to think twice sometimes I'll be getting ready to go in a store and have to stop myself, turn around and go get my mask. It's just who we are. We can do this out of love for one another, for the sake of one another, because we are committed to the great commandment to love one another. You know, don't you wonder if Jesus had simply said, love your neighbor, wear your mask, there'd be a mic drop. And maybe we would do it. Isaiah invites you and I to think back to the journey of our ancestors, to take stock and look of our journey and dream. The words of Isaiah speak to us with hope that the whole story, God's whole story is our story with God. And it includes mercy, compassion, joy, and love. It includes a forever with God. See, it's called grace. It's called salvation. All of this is wrapped up in the gospel of Matthew then which all of you know in this very mad moment is about God's journey, God's journey with God's people. And we're invited into that journey. And it just, I want for a moment, imagine that Jesus is with you and says to you, hey, who do you think I am? You mean, he asks the big question. You've been walking around. And he says, who do you say I am? And Peter answers, you are the Messiah the son of the living God. How does Jesus respond? He says, on this rock, I will build my kingdom, meaning on Peter's faith, on our faith, on our commitment, on our understanding, God builds the kingdom here and now. God having faith in us first. This is all God acting in, through, and for us. And if we connect the dots, hang in there with me, if we connect the dots, it's all been about sharing this message of hope. Not what God is doing, but that God is doing it. Working in us, God working through us, God working for us. Why? Because on our own, it's impossible. It's impossible to save us on our own. 
It's impossible without God to hear such a great message of hope that it restores our soul. It fills us once again. What's your headline? What do you want 2020 to be known for in your family, in the lives of your children, your grandchildren? Certainly it's more than it's just over because in that time, children had birthdays. Children learned to walk, to speak, to read, to play, to sing, to rejoice. What will be your headline? What will you be known for? And how will you take notice of what God is doing in your life? See, I think it's through the abundance of God's grace that when we acknowledge we are saved, it is this that we rejoice. It is this that we give thanks. It is this that is our message of hope that we rejoice in. It is this that gives us a God-sized jolt of strength. Strength that goes beyond our own understanding. Strength that fills us when we have none. This is who we say our Lord is. Our Lord is the Messiah, the Son of God, who will save the world. This is our message of hope. Amen. I invite you to join our hearts and minds together collectively to lift up our petitions to God, our Creator today. Included in those petitions are our, our requests for help and healing for Mary Lou Keel, who's currently in Mercy Hospital in Iowa City, and also Twyla Schrader, who's recovering from a broken bone in the fall on uh, last Monday. So again, let's lift up our prayer, shall we? Lord, as we again come to you before you this morning, we ask you to look on us with mercy and come to our aid, where we find ourselves bashful in our witness, help us stand tall and live boldly. Where we have perhaps felt like we've given up, help us find hope. Where we've succumbed to demeaning labels, help us reclaim our identity as your beloved children. Where we need to open our eyes to recognize in the face of a neighbor near or far away, help us to do so. For we are indeed a new creation in the land of the world. Father, we pray for neighbors to the north who are working so hard to find housing after theirs has been destroyed or to recover from unfathomable damage to so many homes, so many trees, to live without connections, to power, or communications, and simply a risk beginning again when so much has been, has been lost. Open our eyes to their dilemma, our hearts to their grief, and our calendars to their need for help and for hope. And watch over the power crews, the National Guard troops, the hundreds of volunteers there, Lord, that they might be kept safe amid their ongoing relief efforts. We're mindful of all who are returning to schools and classrooms and ministries this fall, and we pray for better compliance with safety precautions, for fitting sensitivity for those who are at greater risk themselves or who live with those who may be. Meanwhile, be with all who are struggling to make the best decisions possible from parents to administrators to governors, give them wisdom and courage and compassion for all involved. Father, we pray for our companion synod in Tanzania today where they're fighting against drought and where they're battling COVID with limited resources, where they're struggling with a government charged with corruption and deception recently. In the church there, rise up and speak up with courage. The most vulnerable in their midst might have the information and tools they need to live in a sustainable and dignifying fashion. And Lord, we ask that you would heal the infirmities of all who call out to you, seeking wholeness of mind or body or spirit today. We lift up those whose ailments are chronic or long-term and those whose healing involves a long path. We pray today for Marilou as she strives to recover, for her twilight and her healing, again for Bob and his family as they savor the days they have. And for all who grieve loved ones, all those who have we've lifted up in our prayer list this week, asking that you would remind each of them of hope and the love that will not let them go. And funny God again, for all the other things that we are praying for or ought to be praying for as we speak the petitions perhaps known only in our hearts.
Once again, God, hear these our prayers. Receive them for the sake of the crucified and risen one. And hear us again as we pray the prayer you taught your first disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil, for the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus stood among those first disciples after his resurrection and said, Peace be with you. And so may the peace of the risen Lord be with you today. Let's take a moment to share a word and a sign of Christ's peace with those around you this morning we might share that gift with one another in a time when it is most desperately needed. This time we also want to pause and say thank you for all of your ongoing financial support of Holy Trinity, our ministry here, and for that matter, the overall ministry of the ELCA and its global partners and the many local ministries, again, that also depend upon our own generosity. One of those worth noting today is Lutheran Disaster Response, who have a very long track record of being able to follow up with the long haul in areas where the Red Cross has come in and met immediate needs, but has had to move on to other areas. But long time recovery still remains. So Holy Trinity adds our gifts to those of churches and individuals from around the country, along with individually designated gifts to provide assistance for those whose needs have fallen through the cracks of our social safety net, as it were. In fact, an anonymous donor has offered to match gifts to LDR up to $500 in this challenging time. So whatever you choose to give, we are thankful to partner with the likes of Lutheran Disaster Response so that God is able to provide hope for every corner of our world, especially if you're giving electronically at times, at this point in time, that really helps us too in terms of our own cash flow and be able to process those gifts efficiently. Once again, however, however and whatever you give, thank you.
Once again, thanks for being part of our worship today. Now may the Lord bless and keep and encourage and embolden you to see how it is that you might go out to be the hands and the feet and the voice of Christ in your own part of, of God's good creation today. Again, please visit our website to learn more about what's going on at Holy Trinity this week and through us. And you all go in peace to love, live, and share Christ. Thanks be to God. I send you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.